so if you watched my video um, a while ago on why I don't use Goodreads, you'll know that I'm not really into like saying I'll do things because I hate not doing the things I'll say I do. If you're my friend in real life, you'll know that I struggle to keep <laughs> two things in general. As my job is in publishing, there are lots of books that I have to read um, urgently. Uh, so I see my free time reading as something that is um, completely spontaneous and I don't really like thinking about what I'm going to read. I like to just pick on the spot. And also the, the aim of books surely is to change you and to change your attitudes to things and to change what you're excited about. So with TBRs, they kind of confuse me in some ways. All of that being said, I was rearranging my shelves for the new year, thanks to Maria Kondo. And um, there were a few books that I picked out that I was just like, I look at them and I'm like, I'm so excited. Um, so I thought I'd show you some of them. Some of them are ones that have come out a while ago and I'm just excited to read and some of them haven't come out yet. Ooh. The first one is All the Rage by Courtney Summers, which is one that I am gonna start reading basically as soon as I turn this camera off. Um, this is coming out in January and it's a book about rape culture. Um, and it's a YA book. So I really wanna know how they treat this. I'm really excited about it. Uh, it's coming out on the 28th of January um, and the blurb says the footsteps stopped but the birds are still singing singing about a girl who wakes up on a dirt road and doesn't know what happened to her the night before the next one is a proof I found in a pile of like discarded books <laughs> somewhere from um, a publisher called One World it's called the prison book club and it's basically about a person who starts a book club in a prison and I read the first few pages and I was enthralled and then I've been meaning to read it ever since so I'm now gonna get to that this is one that I've already started and love already. I'm sorry to think I have raised a timid son by Kent Russell. You might have seen that I hauled this back in like, I don't know, August uh, and I'm just getting to it but I want to read um, like weirdly, I know that like literature is permeated with like white male voices, but actually because of growing up in like, I don't know, what are we on now? Seventh wave feminism? I feel like I don't read a lot of books by men, especially about masculinity and I would like to because it's this experience that I don't have. This is to do with the US military and enlisting and like how that works and how that makes you feel when you grow up in a, in a uh, society that expects you to do that and expects you to die for masculinity. Uh, I want to read about it. Again, this is one I have started very briefly, but I'm so excited to finish very, very soon. This is Sevilla Khan is Not Obliged and it's about a woman who works in a publishing house in London and is um, a Muslim. She starts randomly chatting about her like catastrophic experiences with dating and they enlist her to um, write a memoir on Muslim dating uh, and it sounds hilarious. It sounds like a cross between It's Not Me, It's You and Bridget Jones with some hijab jokes so I'm excited. The protagonists of all of the rom-com books I've ever read have been white females so I Met Lucky People, uh, The Story of the Romany Gypsies is one of the most beautiful books I've ever owned and I almost haven't, I've, I've wanted to read this for about two years and I almost haven't got to it because like I'm just so excited. <laughs> Do you ever get that when you're just like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna love you. You might have seen that I read Gypsy Girl in 2015 and I watch a lot of my Big Chat Gypsy Wedding and I've gone to a few talks on Romany racism and stuff. Um, so I, well, why don't I read this so I can like actually know what the hell I'm talking about rather than just thinking about it in my head. I'm perfecting, perfecting. <laughs> I'm working on the writing I did during NaNoWriMo. So I wrote 50,000 words for NaNoWriMo. You might see some of the post-it notes behind me. I'm working on making that better and adding to it and just making it a piece of work that I'm more happy with. And I wanted to read some more books that I think sit in the genre that I'm trying to write in. Um, so I've got My Salinger Year, um, which is one that loads of you have told me to read a lot. This is about a girl who works in the literary agent of J.D. Salinger. And then Animals, which is one that Catelyn Moran says is good. And loads of people were raving about it when it first came in. I got sent this by the lovely people at Books in My Bag. And I've just so, so been meaning to read it. I just didn't. This is a proof copy of This Is London. It's by Ben Judah, who's an amazing journalist. And it's an overview of loads of different political and historical and current day commentaries on what London is like today. I never make the most of living in London. And I love what I do make the most out of, but... I'd love to connect with it more and just think about it a bit more and learn learn some stuff. This is Room by Emma Donoghue. I don't know how many different copies of this I've owned over the years and just never read and then lost. Um, but I just saw, I saw twice actually the screening of the film that is coming out in January, I think, in the UK. And I'm probably gonna do a separate video on that, but I just thought it's just one of the best films I've seen all, all bloody year slash life. This is a book about a woman who gets kidnapped and kept in a room and it's told from her child's perspective because her child is born in the room. And the way she chooses to help him through that is to tell him that there 
the room is only the room and there is nothing else outside the room. And he's just like lives very contently with that fact until the undivided past is uh, a book that I got pff, looks like pretty far through a long time ago and never finished. And then I keep seeing and having those discussions about how we divide um, race. I don't know if you saw them, there was a really cool video um, called like, I am not black that's been going around for a while. And I'm like, uh, like loads of different stuff is going on in my head. And I'm like, I think a lot of the stuff is in this book and I think it's written by somebody more intelligent than me that's done more research. So I should probably read this before I say anything about anything. Now this, this you might recognize is When We Were Alive by our friend, Chelsea Fisher. Chelsea was one of my first friends on YouTube. Her um, YouTube name is Ophelia Dagger and I used to live with her and now she has a bloody book out. I'm so proud. So this is the proof copy. I'm really, really excited to read this. Uh, and it's out in March. Get a little bit of motion. <laughs> Gonna have to put it down. And then lastly, I am so excited for this. This is a proof copy of Mari McFarlane's new book, Who's That Girl? I don't even want to read the blurb because I don't care what it's about. I love Mari McFarlane's writing and I'll basically read anything that she writes. Uh, I just finished the audiobook of Here's Looking At You. Now I'm going to read this one and everything's going to be great. Them's were all my books that I'm excited about. What books are you excited to read in 2016? I really want to get through all of these as fast as possible, so do keep me to it. I know I'm like resistant of TBRs, but I need to go over my fear of commitment in all walks of my life. But let's focus on books for now. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in 2016. Oh,